to your lips and hips. It, it's, it's, it's totally efficient for the body to store fat. But our foods are low fat. Uh, here's a, a few of the 4,000 recipes that we ask people to eat to satisfy their hunger drive. You're not on the McDougal diet if you're hungry. We, we don't ask you to eat to the point where you make yourself overstuffed in pain with physical discomfort, but to eat to the full satisfaction of your hunger drive because it's normal, it's natural. You only have a couple of options. You can stay hungry. You can go through a bypass operation and, and be post-operatively starving. Or you can make yourself sick with low-carb diets or these uh, shots and pills. You know, there's, there's got to be another option. And that, that's to eat the food intended for human beings. Well, we've done three major studies, or they've been performed on our work. Uh, uh, a couple of them were independent of us. Uh, in our uh, study of about 17,000 people, excuse me, 1,700 people, 1,700 people, uh, at our clinic in seven days, we found the average weight loss was 3.1 pounds. Now, some people lost more, some lost fewer, but almost all, almost everybody lost. Okay, that was in seven days. And then Oregon Health and Science University, they studied our participants totally uninvolved, except for the education. And the average weight loss in a year, think about this, a year in people who didn't even come to our program for weight loss. That wasn't their interest. Uh, and people that are younger than our average age group and are probably more active, the average weight loss in a year, maintained for a year, they were compliant for a year, was over 19 pounds. And then there was an independent study done in New Zealand, the broad study, and they brag about how they have better weight loss than any other program out there. And then when you read at the end of the study, uh, they taught this community, the McDougall program. And they got you know, pretty similar results to ours, but they got a little more weight loss, same diet. So th those are our scientific studies. They've been uh, to date, to date, they have not received any criticism and why should they? It's true. One of the important things uh, that we study from the Oregon Health and Health and Science University research that we did, this was the neurology department of OHSU, the medical school in Portland. One of the things that really surprised them was people followed the diet. We developed a food frequency questionnaire that people took and we knew exactly what they ate in terms of fat and foods and so on. And this is a, uh, a randomized control trial, the highest quality trial that you can do on food. And we divided the people into a control group. Then they were supposed to stay on the Western diet. They're represented by the red line. They're the control group. And then they, there was the intervention group who came to our program, you know, just like the 12-day program we teach over the internet by telemedicine, same program they dropped their fat intake down to about 15%. That's the green line. Whereas the control group maintained their fat intake at around 40%. 85% of the people in the intervention group were compliant for a year. Why were they compliant? Why? Because the results were so phenomenally fantastic and the food tasted great. They loved it. You can't take, get people to take drugs at this, at this frequency. You get half of your patients to take the drugs and you're lucky. 85% were compliant. Well, the red line dips there because we took the control group into the program and taught them the program and they got the same results. Once they follow the diet, it always works. If you look at various weight loss programs, I understand some of these are going out of business and becoming bankrupt. Why? Because the weight loss is, uh, in, it, uh, well, I mean, it's there, but mm, you put a lot of work and money into it, and what you got was not what you would hope for. And like six pound weight loss in two years, big deal. Okay. Uh, but when they advertise their programs, they tell you, look, uh, Jenny Craig, Nutrisystems, et cetera, they tell you, 
when they show testimonies, they say, this is the best case scenario. Don't expect these results. And by the way, these kinds of diets are semi-starvation diets. When you semi-starve, you're hungry. The only way you can get the hunger to go away is to completely starve, you know, fewer than 600 calories of carbohydrate. Go on a keto diet, go into ketosis. But if you're going to semi-starve, which you do in these kinds of programs, you're hungry all the time. And they say, this is the best case scenario. Well, what I'm here to tell you is that what I'm going to show you is what you should expect. These, these are not best case scenarios. If you do the program, these are the results you'll get. You know, just like you stop, if you stop smoking cigarettes, you'll reduce or stop your, your coughing. You know, just like if you stop the booze, you'll stop falling down. If you stop the unhealthy foods, then you'll recover. Your body is an absolute miracle in its ability to recover. You just have to give it a chance by feeding it properly. You know, Doug Lerner, you see a picture of him in the right-hand corner. He was not a happy guy. And he discovered the program, lost 140 pounds, maintained his 144-pound frame, got off his uh, diabetic regime, Blood sugar became uh, normal at 87. Hemoglobin A1C became subnormal at 5.1%. Dropped his cholesterol 100 points. This, this is what you should expect. This is what happens. This is not the best case scenario. Uh, this is one of the people who uh, works in our program. Uh, she has been with us for almost a year, and we have usually uh, usually one past participant talks about their experience in the program when you attend the 12-day program, telemedicine program. Then she talks about being off all her medicines and uh, feeling well, feeling great. You can read all the things. And she's lost a lot of weight. You know, she lost uh, 70 pounds. Typical. But the, this Tom McCarthy, McCarthy, Tom McCarthy, lost 140 pounds. Well, you know, he went to, he went to the Santa Rosa program, the resort, you know, where it probably cost him $10,000 to come. He went to that first. He attended. He learned some things, lost some weight, did better. And then he took the telemedicine program in September of 2020, you know, where he got to stay home. The cost was uh, about a third of what he had to pay when he came to Santa Rosa. Did it at home. Finally got it. You know, it sometimes takes more than one experience to, you know, to learn the message. But he finally got it. And it was the telemedicine program that rolled him over into a better understanding of practicality. Um, Fred Ford, author, speaker, lost weight, like 110 pounds. There's a participant lost 23 pounds, that was all she needed. And another participant who had juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, which was cured by changing her diet. We have a lot of those cases of people with inflammatory arthritis, even juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, who've uh, essentially cured a, a fatal disease. You know, half the people with uh, rheumatoid arthritis are dead 20 years after diagnosis. It's a fatal disease. You give it to a kid, it's really fatal. What horrible life. Anyway, this, this lady was an example of somebody who lost the weight, got rid of her disease problems. And I can go on and on, but let me go off to some side discussions here. Uh, some, some people occasionally, not very often, but occasionally somebody says they went on our program and gained weight. Well, if you go on our program, you're going to gain weight if you were starving or if you're on the low carb diet, because you're going to replenish your glycogen stores. You carry around in your muscle and your liver about two pounds of glycogen, which is matched by four pounds of water. So you eliminate when you go on a keto diet, you know, first you wanna burn those sugars, the glycogen. And then when you burn them all up, you burned off six, eight, 10 pounds of water. Well, if you come to us, deprived of glycogen, we're going to replenish your glycogen stores and you're going to gain some weight. That, 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 that's what you should expect if you 
been starving or on a low-carb diet. You should expect to regain that glycogen, but you don't see the glycogen. It's invisible in your muscles and your liver. The other thing is you may have been on a painful starvation regime. So all that suffering that went on because you try to make yourself sick program or you make yourself in pain program or went through bariatric surgery and they're still in pain. You know, all this, all this memory may have put you in a hyperphagia state. Well, if that's the case, if you are an overeater or a volume eater, or a binge eater, you call it a binge eater, like, like I was. I used to be that way. You know, most of my adult life, I ate like that. Here's a typical meal. I'd eat a couple of plates of food that looked like that. So if you're like that, then do what I did, and that is give the food some time to register. You know, if you gobble it right down, then gobble the next plate down, the, the brain hasn't received the stimuluses from the hormones that change, the insulin that changes. To tell you that you've eaten, give it a break. Take and fill your plate to a medium-sized plate of food. Eat it, go for a walk for half an hour and come back and refill your plate. Become a nibbler, a grazer, because nibblers and grazers take in fewer calories. They lose weight faster. They lower their cholesterol faster than do gorgers. So, that's one thing to pay attention to. You know, essentially, every overweight person, because of the Western diet, who starts our program, loses the body weight that they desire. You know, I, I say that without any hesitation. Why do I say that? Well, you know, up until recently, you could look at town squares with, a, with 100,000 people rallying in the town square in, in, in Vietnam and Thailand. But you could still see this in North Korea. And people living on white rice, hundreds of thousands of people, nobody's overweight, none, zero. But you don't have to go that far. You know, the, the diet we serve you is with no apologies, the tastiest, most enjoyable, healthiest food available. You never have to be hungry. If you're hungry, you're not on the McDougal program. And several years back, 1994, 29 years ago or so, I was 46 years old. And I finally got enough pressure from my followers to write a book on weight loss. You see, when I developed this program, I was a medical resident. I was taking care of very ill people with failing hearts. Only 10% of their heart muscle was left. The failing kidneys, uh, they'd already lost 90% of their kidney function. You know, really, really sick people. And so I, I wanted to take care of them. I didn't care about being overweight. That wasn't my focus. I was uh, just a doctor. I didn't want to be a diet doctor. And so uh, I wrote the program with the intention of just taking care of the very ill. But what I found out is pretty much everybody is ill. You know, it, 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 pretty much everybody is in need of the best that I know. And, and ladies and gentlemen, you can make your own compromises. You know, my son practiced this way for a while. And he said, he said to me, he said, I, I don't have to teach my patients compromises. They know how to cheat all on their own. But, but you need to be taught the best there is so that you can have the greatest chance of getting your health back and your personal appearance back. There should be no compromise on our end. So we've taught you such a diet. And the maximum weight loss program for those of you who want to go in that direction. And by the way, this is still a big seller for a penguin putnam. That's still on their, their top selling list, which is unusual for a book that happens to be uh, you know, almost 30 years old. Anyway, what the uh, Maximum Weight Loss Program teaches you is to avoid flour products. Remember I told you that the calorie density goes up from one calorie per gram to two calories per gram when you grind up the food. So you avoid ba bagels and breads and pastas. Maybe not pasta so much because you reconstitute that with water and it, dry, it goes down back down to about one calorie per gram. You know, and uh, most of us, it's not an issue eating breads. And, you know, I may have talked to you about the experiment done at Michigan State University where they had moderately weight, overweight men eat as much as they wanted, but they had to add 12 slices of bread a day to their diet for, for two months. And just by adding the extra bread unconsciously, 
eating lower fat, higher carbohydrate food, bread, 12 slices a day, without reducing the pork chops or the, the bacon or the eggs or the oil or the salad dressing, without any of that, just they had to eat 12 slices of bread a day. The average weight loss at two months was 14 pounds for those eating the white bread and 19 pounds for those eating the, the whole grain bread. So even bread's not so bad. But on the maximum weight loss program, we're going to cut that out. We're going to cut the flour products out. And, and we're going to uh, make sure you don't eat any more than a fruit or two a day. Maybe none. Fruits are too easy to eat. You can eat 20 without even thinking about it. Calories count. Then maybe we'll cut the salt out of your diet because then no food won't taste very good. Maybe, well, I'm just joking. I want the food to taste good because I want you to eat it. And, and maybe could switch you from a gorging pattern to a grazing pattern of eating that we just talked about. Maybe we could do that. But one of the primary principles of the maximum weight loss program is to reduce the amount of starch from 90% of the food on your plate to maybe one third of your plate is now green yellow vegetables instead of fewer than 10%. And now instead of 90% of your plate being starch, uh, two thirds of your place is starch. That's the maximum weight loss program. Green and yellow vegetables are much lower in calories. In terms of volume, they're much more filling. And then you can carry this one step further uh, for a rapid weight loss program where it's half non starchy green and yellow vegetables like kale and cabbage and celery, you know, traditional diet foods. It's half that and then it's half starch like rice and corn and potatoes. That, that's what I'd call the rapid weight loss. But ladies and gentlemen, you go any further than that, you're not going to be sticking with the program. You're going to be eating such low calorie green and yellow vegetables that you may never get satisfied. I'd have to eat 11 to 22 pounds of cabbage a day just to meet my calorie needs, depending on how active I was. So you make sure you have enough starch to satisfy your hunger drive. And then we'll, we're talking about permanent, permanent weight loss. Many people stay on the maximum weight loss program or use the principles for a lifetime. And you can and you should and you would if you wanted to, but most of you won't have to. You could just follow the basic program. All right, we're getting close to the end of this and I want you to get involved in this discussion of hunger. And, and I, here's a way to do it. Uh, you can replicate something that, that our family did uh, about 35 years ago. And there's actually Mary and I that participated in it. There's actually me that instigated this particular experiment that occurred at a congregation in Honolulu, Hawaii. We were in a small congregation and, and we met you know, every week. And one of the things that we talked about were the starving children in Ethiopia and Africa and how everybody felt terrible about these poor starving children. It was the headline news every night about the starving children in Africa. And so I said to the congregation, I said, why don't we learn what it's like to be hungry? And I got half of the members to agree with me and go along with me. And so we stopped eating on Friday night, Saturday morning, no big deal. I thought this was gonna be easy. Saturday afternoon, I started about thinking about food. And by Saturday evening, I had no money problems. I had no problems with getting along with anybody. I, I didn't have any problems on my mind except for a hungry person thinks only of food. A Sunday morning, I could hardly, hardly wait to get back to the members of uh, this congregation because Mary was going to serve a meal typical of what you'd eat in Africa. And for us, it was the best meal we ever had. It was a meal of a lettuce salad, a lentil stew, flatbread, and some rice. But for us, whoa, if you're having trouble learning to like a good diet, this, you know, this weekend may be the time to start learning about hunger. I guarantee you the food that we serve you will be delicious at the end of three days of starvation when you're suffering the pain of hunger. Why? Because food's necessary to stay alive. Why, why would you not get hungry? To the, to the point of intolerance. You know, just like you can't stand to hold your breath or, or not take in water. You, you cannot stand to be hungry. It's not normal or natural. 
And now you understand hunger, and it's key to understanding why there's uh, epidemic obesity around the world, why there are obesity-related diseases. It's not because there's something wrong with you. It's not because your stomach is too big for your body or because your genes have gone awry or, or because you have emotional or mental problems or because you don't exercise enough. There's nothing wrong with you, ladies and gentlemen. You were born in this world with the intention of looking good and feeling good and functioning well your whole life. The problem is the food and the solutions are costly, dangerous, and painful. Give in, allow yourself to eat. <laughs>